What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild on Madden 21 and today we're taking on the Washington football team. Of course, this is like post-draft, I mean, well post-draft, it's, it's, it's post-summer, it's not really post-summer, you know, it's the beginning of summer, but Washington, they added some names, they didn't really, you know, work too hard on their quarterback position, they got Ryan Fitzmagic. But, you know, he only can get you so far. I will say, though, if he was on that team last year, you really never know the limit that they could have had. They almost beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They could have beat the Packers. Who freaking knows? Who Could you imagine Ryan Fitzpatrick leading Washington to a Super Bowl? Could you imagine it? Because they had a chance. That defense was insane. Of course, in the offseason, they did lose but also gain on their offensive line. They drafted Cosme in the second round, who I gave star to. They added Leno not even a couple, like maybe a month ago. Uh, their line is definitely good enough. Tight end, maybe they could use a, an upgrade there. But receiver, obviously Curtis Samuel, uh, a decent upgrade, I suppose. And then Tor Terry McLaurin, who has been very solid pretty much since a rookie. Uh, and, of course, speaking of rookies... Gibson, not a bad rookie himself. As far as the defensive side of things go, like we said, that front four is probably the best in football at this point, or very close to the best, top two at least. Uh, with Jamin Davis, the new middle linebacker that they took in the first round will be a plug-and-play starter for us. Corners, William Jackson next to Kendall Fuller, who I would assume is going to be a corner. I can't tell because they, like, they always tinker with him at free safety, so I don't even know... Uh, and then, of course, Landon Collins, they paid a lot of money for. He's been, you know, he's been okay. Uh, and then they have a rookie free safety. So there are things to work on, obviously. There is a there is a pretty big rebuild aspect to this, especially at quarterback. So the team's not set in stone, but there are a lot of tough positions that are already filled. So, you know, it's it's an okay rebuild team, and you know, they are, do have a lot of fun players to work with. I'm going to be honest with you, Ryan. I really do not care. I'm... I'm going to go with the O-line. I don't even know what the future of this team looks like. But speaking of future, I know what's in your future. You're maybe going to like and subscribe. Yeah, am I right? And maybe you'll check out the pinned comment where I'll clearly not forget to post my Amazon aff uh, affiliate link that I literally haven't posted in over a month. It's time for re-signings, Brandon Sheriff. I don't know if they actually signed him recently in real life or not, but... I'm going to give him a five-year deal, actually. He can play till probably even a six-year deal. Chase Roulier, he has the star dev here. He's definitely worth it. Only about seven mil per year. Probably could have given him even more than three years. Dustin Hopkins, yeah, I mean, maybe. And then Charles Leno, who actually just recently signed here. Um, Man, that's a lot of money. Ten mil per year. I feel like we could get him back in free agency for even like 11 mil per year. Or just go for someone that's, I don't know, a little bit better. I mean, he's good, but is oh, like uh, like in a user league. Screw it, we'll sign him. <laughs> I'm not going to argue anymore. So, uh, I'll, um, hmm. <laughs> Let's just say this season didn't go to plan. Uh, I don't even know if I've ever seen Washington play that poorly in Sim, like, ever. They won. The one team they beat is the best team in in Madden Sim. It's the best team in general, but it's the best team in Madden Sim, and yet that's the team we beat. Oh, yep. If there's any team I would expect them to beat in Madden, it's the Browns. Of course, as far as Ryan Fitzpatrick goes, that's the type of season that with this team, this supporting cast on both sides of the ball, you would expect a postseason run from. Of course, the completion percentage is lacking a bit, but that's, pr I mean, those are decent numbers. They're good enough. Rushing was atrocious. Terry McLaurin tried to fuel the passing attack, and you know he did as much, you know, as much as he could. But I gotta say, this this is an abysmal showing. That is just god awful by the offense. That is disgustingly bad. Uh, Jamin Davis with uh, most likely a dev up to superstar. I can't really say for sure though. Uh, DTs. I gotta see if there's any DT that they haven't actually signed because we need to get some more talent around here and. It would probably be easier to do so if we traded off one of our top tier talents that we don't even technically need. Cam Newton wins MVP, as you would expect. Uh, Jamin Davis, the rookie of the year. That's going to be the only thing we win. There's no chance at anything else. Let's see where he actually was, speaking of. Wasn't even on the list for linebackers. Nice. But yeah, uh, it's not according to plan as you know what you would expect in real life, but... 
as far as our plan, if there's a quarterback there, it's definitely a good thing, right? We're, we have the number one overall pick. So if there's a quarterback here, we may get things rolling as the Chiefs beat the Buccaneers, apparently, by 18. Let's take a look at these DevOps. Any at all, we see none on offense at all. We probably also forgot, not even probably, we forgot to turn on auto upgrading, which may or may not be a big L. Uh, is that Montez Sweat going up to Superstar? He clearly deserved it. Jonathan Allen, I believe, also went to Super Nothing. He did not go up to Superstar, so... Okay, so I'm going to be honest. Matthew Ioannidis, the chances of him still being here after this season are very slim. Also, Holcomb went up to star, which I've seen him hit free agency a lot, which if he's asking for something like 10 mil per year, I'm going to follow suit. Like, not me as the coach. I'm the owner. I'm not going to leave with it. I just mean, like, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna do the thing. We need a new kicker. We need a new everything, honestly. Like, we just need something different here. Let's take a look at uh, free agency. I don't know how much we're willing to spend Dak Prescott obviously isn't a real option. Uh, tight end could be an option, but Gronk is, you know, that's not the right money. Jayon Brown. Linebacker could definitely use an improvement. Jayon Brown is not a name you would see often. I think we're going to have to give a good hard look at the, the numbers. And if we can crunch them, everything looks good. We may go with Jayon. All right, we got some names. You got Bentley. I really want a Jayon Brown. He's still there, but I think people have bid him up. So we'll see what we can do with that. Uh, we got the Javelin. Uh, as the uh, potential number four corner. Ertz is the new number one. We paid him a one-year seven, pretty much all guaranteed. Nicholas Morrow is another depth guy on linebacker spot and then a backup safety. All right, it's draft time. And of course, I mean, I, I don't even mind it, but there is uh, three decent-looking quarterbacks. Steven Jackson, interesting name. Then you have the faster type guy who's, I mean, he's not even faster. He's very fast. Chase Hogan, who they mentioned and then Larry Parks. It's a pretty clear-cut choice that it is Chase Hogan is my favorite. Miami doesn't need a quarterback, so trading down just isn't viable. So, with that being said, I think we have no choice but to take Chase Hogan here as our selection. And please be hidden. He is hidden. They said, the, ironically, number 13. Ranked 13, but we took him number one overall. A little bit lower on the throw power, but very, very fast. Probably should have been even faster than that, but an absolute win. What is Miami going to do? They take the Heisman winning wide receiver and a safety Miami winning hard there. No quarterback at four or five. What is this? I was about to say, no shot, right? Even the Giants should take one. There was two tight ends that were late first round picks, but honestly, I just... We paid for Ertz. I know it's only a one-year deal. Ooh, this guy, they said, was really, really good, but don't really need a running back too badly. But, uh, you know, we got a one-year deal for Ertz. I think uh, I think we're fine there. We could use a safety, though. Cameron Curl had a chance, actually two breakout chances, and he failed both. And I'm just like, you know, I don't you – know, I'm not really feeling it. Who's this DT mid-second? Like, we don't need a DT, but, like, we could trade off – like, Miami has two picks here. I mean, tell me why they wouldn't trade for Matthew Ioannidis. Tell me why. Give me one good reason why they wouldn't take Matthew Ioannidis for a second-round pick. Like, I just don't think there is one. They desperately need a DT. We're making that call. Matthew Ioannidis, who also does have an extra upgrade points, going to Miami for pick 34, giving us back-to-back -back selections here. O-line's still a decent need. This guy can play guard. We're going to get a normal dev, and I'm going to cry, but here we are. We're going to take him, and 71 overall. I mean, he just looks so good. I'm going to force the dev. I don't care, dude. I'm going to force his dev, and I'm going to force some other O-lineman devs. This game is just trash for them. And now, I was going to take that DT because he does look very, very good. No doubt about it. No questions about it, but we need the safety more, don't we? We need the safety more. What about these guys, though? What about these? You know, there's, there's some choices I think we're going to take the safety, Theo Hood, and let's go for it. And hidden development trade, 72 overall. I wasn't even 100% sure if he was going to be, but, man, if he wasn't, that would have been a sell of a draft pick. It would have literally been Cameron Curl point, like 1.0, pretty much, like a one for one. Ooh, man, that's a good trade that they made. Uh, Jarrell Bush, the guy that we wanted was a 73 overall, so he's a good player. And we don't need to worry about anything else because all of our players should still be there when we start the third round. Now we have a choice. Uh, we don't really need a pass rusher, but this Ed Nash guy looks like an absolute can't-miss player. Similar to this corner, but the corner is just a little bit too slow in my mind. So we're going to go... Wait, what was it? Early? 
lay first. Ed Nash, gotta take him. Gotta take him. And that bottom right is OP. They gotta change that because if it wasn't for the bottom right, yes, the potentials look decent and his 40 time and all that looked good enough. But I wouldn't have taken him with a third round pick. But when it said early first, you gotta do it. And what a steal that is. And then with this pick, if the tight end's still there, I think we're gonna take the tight end because we are lacking youth at the tight end position. Of course, Jalen Miller's still there. You know, late first is tough to pass on, but we need the tight end. This guy looks very valuable, honestly. It looks like a steal. Robbie Raymond, of course, we knew the overall would be a little low, but he's workable. 83 speed is very harsh, though. 88 Excel, 83 speed. Not as athletic as I would have expected from a 4.64, was it? Now, the start of the fourth, and I mean, how do you pass up on that guy, right? How do you pass up again on the man that you were looking at? Walter Henry looks really good, too. There's some value. There's a lot of value here. I think we got to take him. Jalen Miller, slow, but late first projection, and yeah, maybe not so great. And now, even though this guy mm, is so tough because, like, he's 24, and he's not really good, but they said that he was looking like the best linebacker. I'm not sure why he slipped, though, if that's the case. 24. I'm not really sure what we do with that guy anyways. You know what? I'm going to skip, but I do want to see how good he is later. Walter Henry, late first running back, and he's hitting absolute W last second decision. I mean, that Jason Brooks guy, he would pretty much have to be a superstar or better for that for that to even be worth it, which ironically enough, he probably will be. Uh, wide receiver is pretty much our last choice here. He's got some, uh, you know, some decent qualities, but yeah, he does have a very rough showing. And then we finish with a punter, James Whitman. Glad that uh, he's 85 pick kick power because clearly you could do a whole lot with that, can't you? We landed a few hiddens, though. I think it was like hidden, normal, hidden, normal, was it? No, actually, we landed more than that. Wait, no, it was. No, it wasn't. I mean, kind of. But Chase Hogan, the automatic starter at quarterback without a singular doubt. Please give us a good dev star. I mean, it's not bad. Just, you know, it wasn't as good as it could have been. And then even though it is kind of cheese, but like, uh, like I kind of have to, right? It's so cheese, not... Uh, we land enough hit I'm going to give him normal. Damn it, dude. Theo Hood, uh, he's going to start automatically. Cameron Curl just... He's already 25, and he's a sophomore that screwed up two breakouts. Start of element trait, automatic starter Theo Hood. Nash, no chance to start no matter what. Actually, is he able to play coverage? I doubt it, but we'll take a look at the dev anyways. And he is star, as you would expect. Can he play coverage? Uh, I mean, I'll keep the door open there. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, what else do we have? Tight end wasn't. Running back, don't know what his future is like, but best case scenario is he starts like a year or two from now. But I'm still curious to see the dev. And, of course, another star. But, I mean, absolute wins, obviously. Number 21, which I don't even know if you can wear that around here without getting sued. Of course, you guys would probably absolutely hate me if we didn't take a look at those wide receiver, or the wide receiver, the quarterbacks. Speaking of wide receiver, Antoine Hankins. Can I change the number for them? Thank you. I'd rather have them at even 87 X factor, as you would expect, which is... I mean, what can you do, right? Like, I mean, we have to go quarterback. I can't just think, well, I mean, that guy did look pretty good. Uh, Steven Jackson, of course, was a hidden. Definitely a better passer. And his excel and agility are actually pretty decent. But, of course, a whole 10 speed lower than our guy. Superstar better we sold. And we did not sell. Nice. Uh, there was another quarterback. I don't know if he would have went in the first round, though. He should have. But I don't know if he would have. Let's take a look at the two tight ends. 17 and 18. So, normal dev there. Normal dev there. They're both literally, like, the exact same as our guy. Uh, the Cowboys who lost Prescott in this universe to basically another Prescott uh, in the draft. Let's take a look at the Dev. Watch, he'll definitely be the best of the three, right? The highest Dev, definitely not the best, but, you know, I mean, Superstar is pretty good, right? Jarrell Bush, the DT, and, you know, these are what happens. You know, this happens a lot, so I, I kind of expected that. I wasn't going to, like, you know, running backs, good running backs in Madden Zim are actually pretty common, but I, I want to look at this guy now because as an X-Factor in general... He is very interesting because he's 5'9", 186, with 81 trucks, 78 stiff arm, insane excel, and pretty decent agility, 89 speed, decent catching. He is a very interesting player, has aggressive. He's basically Steve Smith, but like just pure running back. And here's Jason Brooks, 69 overall. He was, in fact, hitting very rough speed to work with, though. 
Uh, let's let's take a look at his dev though. Supers are better. It probably was a good pick. And I mean, maybe we should have went for him over the running back, you know. But 24 years old, there's so much going against him already in Madden Sim. I just can't do it. With that speed, that 40 time, and that age, he just can't, right? He just can't. All right, year two, we had a pretty damn good draft. We obviously got a good value for Ionitis. We have ourselves a potential franchise quarterback. There's not much more you could ask for around here. Zach Ertz is a decent upgrade at tight end, but obviously we'll have to look for someone else going forward. Peters, he's basically the same overall as Flowers and, I mean, a lot more upside, so he's going to get the nod for now. As far as the defensive side of things goes, uh, we got some upgrades, obviously. We uh, used all of them instead of forgetting to this time. Uh, and Jamin Davis, 80 overall after his uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year award win. And, you know, we got uh, we made some upgrades, right? You know, we got debbed up for uh, Sweat. Deron Payne went up some overalls. Some guys went up overalls. Some guys went up devs. And, of course, we got a franchise quarterback. All right, we have to re-sign some DTs. I mean, we got rid of one of them. You can't get rid of them all. So uh, we're going to re-sign Jonathan Allen to a 5-year 83. A little bit cheaper is Deron Payne, which is ironic because he probably has... I mean, I say probably because he is only star. He has better longevity. So we gain an extra year for slightly less on top of it. So we got the DTs back. The main, uh, you know, success of this defense. You got to keep those guys intact. As far as anything else goes, though, probably not going to be re-signing anyone else's their prices are, their asking prices are pretty damn high. And oh, I'm going to put it this way. We did not do very well. We were 6-10, and 10, which is obviously an improvement. But I don't know if I'm missing something. But this roster doesn't feel... Let me actually, let me see if I'm missing something. Let's say, okay, we're lagging a little bit here, which is great news. Uh, Eagles, okay, kind of tough. Definitely tough. Meh, okay, kind of tough. Tough, kind of tough. Tough, meh, meh, tough, tough. Meh, 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 meh. I mean, they, they, it's not the easiest schedule. I could see where we lost a lot, and uh, some of those looked actually like pretty close scores. The rest of the division wasn't even that great, so yeah, I guess I can see it. Chase Hogan, I don't even want to talk about it. That is just awful. I mean, it, I mean, it's not awful, but it's just, you know, I know even though he's a rookie, I just expect a lot, and we did not get a lot <laughs> as far as uh, the defensive side of things go. Chase Young was pretty good, so... I mean, we got some success here. William Jackson should go up to Superstar. I mean, we got some bonus. You know, some things went all right for ourselves. Any award wins at all? I think that's 30th offense back-to-back -back years. Nice. Defensive player of the year, Jamin Davis. Not even rookie, like defensive rookie of the year. Like last year, gets the whole player of the year. Steven Jackson, of course, with the... How did they play? God dang it. 8-8. Eight eight. I mean, they weren't much better than us. Yeah, I mean... That's a bit of a loss. William Jackson, best DB on top of it. Ravens win the Super Bowl over the Bears, and let's take a look at any dev ups we may have had offensively. Not a hope in the world as we were awful. And then defensively, Allen gets up to X Factor. So he went from star to X Factor in two seasons, which is nice. Jamin Davis is a superstar development trade player. And I believe there was one. Yeah, William Jackson is expected. Gets a superstar. What do you get? Unfakeable and bench press. Okay, fair enough. $51 million to work with. Cornerback, especially with William Jackson going up in dev, is not the biggest need, so we're going to ignore that. Uh, Ronald Jones, not bad. Fred Warner, seen that name a few times. Uh, I mean, I don't think we need to pay that kind of money for a defender. I think, once again, it's the offense that needs the damn help. But the problem is, like, what do we actually fix on offense? Because realistically, unless we go for... Like a running back, I mean, uh, O-lineman, but there's no O-lineman here. So, I mean, what do you actually do to improve the team? I don't think there is anything. I think we're we're good. We're just not playing well. Maybe it's just the you know the quarterback is a rookie after all. So, maybe that's the thing. I don't know. Fred Warner is a tough name to pass on, though, I will admit. I will admit, for a team that loves defense as well, if we offered him like a six-year 82... Would that be like a six-year 84? Would he take it? 74 points. We'll leave it. If he's willing to take it, I'm willing to accept it. Although Chris Barnes, not a bad choice himself. He's decent enough. You know what? Chris Barnes. I'm going to take a look and see if we can actually like afford slash need that many. Ooh, David and Joker, we got to. We've seen this move a few times, but you got to go for David and Joker. We are broke. 
We don't honestly need Fred. I'm just going to go for Chris Barnes, who we've seen many times, and we have never actually taken him. And we get both as expected. I mean, they had no offers, and we literally gave them market value. Uh, my Xbox, as expected, will about to be dead. I don't know what it is. Like, I have the Series X, and, like, it doesn't... Like, I have a friend that has one, and it seems like it underperforms compared to his as well for load times, and I get this lag issue. I don't know if it's just on too often, but, like... I don't know. I'm not like a huge fan of the situation going on. And boy, does it look like there's a lot of linebackers that are good. Don't really need one though. So, you know, there's that. So we have pick seven, but I will say we don't really have anyone there that really, you know, helps us grow too much. So we're going to end up trading down to the Buccaneers to 26, however, or to 30, whatever it is. However, we will be trading back up at some point. They get a left a 70 overall left tackle. Okay, I'm going to try to trade up to like 15 for a wide receiver that looks really good. If he's not there, he's not there. He's really fast and he is a very, very good talent. That may have been him or that may have been him. And let's be honest, there's a very good chance it was both of them. It was neither. Okay, I'm mean, not both of them, but look at this guy. He's 23, but you got to do it, right? You got to trade up for him. The Colts... See how much it costs us. We give them pick 30, pick 71, and pick 65 for pick 15. Uh, which, you know, the trade we got from the Buccaneers, they probably should have given us a little bit more. That trade right there, we probably should have given them a little bit more. Everyone's getting undervalued. That's all I can really say. Obviously, that wide receiver is my number one choice. But you always got to look around. That guy is very good too, Mr. Dawson. Amari Hayward, you don't really need a pass rusher too much. There's a lot of value here, but I don't think there's any value higher than what Hilton could do for this offense, so we're going to take him. 77 overall hidden. If he wasn't like a fast-style wide receiver, I just simply wouldn't have taken him, but this is almost exactly what I was expecting to see. Maybe a little bit faster than that, because 97 speed, 91 excel is actually pretty low for a 4-2-4, four, four. Uh, but... Hey, insanely fast, insanely talented, plug-and-play number three. And if it comes down to we can't afford, afford Curtis Samuel when he needs another contract, you know, we already have our guys situated. Cornerback is kind of a growing need on the team, and this guy just looks like an absolute stud. Even if he isn't hidden, he... Well, he is hidden, but even if he isn't hidden, he should be pretty damn fast. And I'm going to be honest, once again, kind of lower than I expected. 4-3-4. Four, four. Once again, I don't know the acceleration drills, but it looked like he had top marks in pretty much everything. Only 90 Excel, 92 Agility, okay jumping, automatic plug and play number three. But if it comes down to the, you know, we need to re-sign William Jackson, if this guy's better than Star, we might not have to. But what I must say is we are absolutely crushing the draft at this point in time. Uh, as far as what we need going forward, I don't know if there really is a choice I mean, that running back looks good, but how many damn running backs do we need? Uh, what is this guy? He's in mid-third. If he's still there, I guess we'll take him because Chase isn't getting any younger, and I believe we need to re-sign him this year. So if this guy's even like a 72 overall normal, we can avoid that. And how are these quarterbacks still there? Yet last draft, we had to take our guy like super high. So did the other guys. So I don't know. That's strange. Glenn Kerr, though. Let's hope for the best. And 70 overall normal. More normal devs. He looks okay, but yeah, once again, normal dev. And the best part is we obviously picked up that first round from the Buccaneers next year, and they might not be as good because Brady might either be gone or just regressed. DT looks okay. We might grab him for depth. Same with this guy. Uh, early fifth. Yeah, we'll take the DT. What's his name? Herrera. Yeah, not very good. <laughs> not worth it at all. Oh, wait, was the... Don't tell me the running back was there and I just went blind. Okay, I was about to say. I For some reason, I seen the, the fullback and I thought it was the running back. I was like... Did I just let him go? I mean, don't get me wrong. We don't really need a running back like we said before, but really? Uh, and then early when, you know, best available. <laughs> and he truly is, is he's a hidden. I don't know why it's that obvious. You know, I just took the other guy because I was like, okay, he's kind of young, you know, this, this, and this. But apparently it's just that obvious and that easy to draft players. When it says mid or early first, they're going to be good. Whether they're hidden or not, they're going to at least be very good and worth your while and that's exactly what happens there. Fullback, Mitch McConnell actually looks really good. 72 overall. This draft was sick. Like, get an ambulance because this this draft is on its deathbed. Well, I don't even know what that means because <laughs> that would be bad. I don't know. And we're going to take a third round projected running back that I wish I didn't take. 
Let's take a look at the draft recap from season, well, draft three. Wait, is this draft three? I don't know. We're going on to season three, though. Parker Hilton, automatic three, no matter what, even if he's an X-Factor. He's the number three for the season. X-Factor, though? It's probably going to be star. And, yeah, he is star development trait. 80? Really? 80? Number 11 looks a lot better. Number 80. Casey McClain, another guy that uh, automatically number three. So we landed number three wide receiver and corner in the draft. Some of the toughest positions to land as well. 41. I mean, he's he's kind of on the larger side, right? Yeah, that works. I mean, he's not really larger, but he's uh, taller, I suppose. And then the DT, that once again, no matter what, is not a starter. So it doesn't really matter too much to check their dev, which he is also star. Could this be the year we do some damage? Probably not, but hey, yeah, gotta keep a, a smiley face. To do a little smileys. Uh, I will say, Curtis Samuel, I believe, needs a contract this year. We do have a Hilton, who I think is only star, but he is built, I wouldn't say similarly to uh, Curtis Samuel, but I mean, you could definitely see that they're built pretty similarly to, you know, to, to Curtis Samuel. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. It'd be nice to have three sick wide receivers when our tight end is kind of meh. It's kind of meh. Uh, O-line's kind of meh. You know, we got a really high performer in Sheriff, and then we have a guy with a lot of potential in Cosme, and then Peters is all right, but then center and left tackle, that's kind of the best we're going to get. Uh, whereas defensively, the team's really good. It's a very good team. I mean, the defense should not be a reason to lose at all, even though ironically enough, no, I was about to say, Ironically enough, it'd probably be the lowest of the two, but no, not this time. It actually is the offense. So, of course, we have to re-sign two wide receivers. Terry McLaurin is like the cream of the crop, but he is also asking for, for nearly double at this rate. But you know what? He's worth every penny. We're going to go with a six-year deal worth $129 million, which he obviously will accept. Curtis Samuel we'll talk about later as Montez Sweat, even though I don't know if I necessarily think he's worth the money. It's not a bad contract, and he is a very good overall, so he should be worth the money, but it is Sim. I have no idea how that's going to play out. William Jackson the third now. That's not a terrible contract, but we do have a guy waiting in the balance. We probably should let Curtis Samuel go. Can we maybe tag him and ship him? I, I don't know. I, I, I just think we don't really need Curtis Samuel. Give the, the slot guy... Another, well, maybe not another season, but the rest of the season, see where he's at, and then maybe uh, move on from Curtis. Or, you know, you ship him, keep him. You have a choice. Obviously, catching's very good. Deep rod's very good. The rest, not so great. You know, he is pretty fast. He is jukey, but overall, he's not really bringing a whole lot to the team that we already, you know, that we don't already have. Uh, William Jackson, I guess we'll give him one more year just because he's superstar. If he was star, I would definitely pass him on. Uh, Cole Holcomb, don't need him. Nicholas Morrow, I thought we gave him like a three-year deal. Maybe that was like year one, and now it's, you know, three years later. Uh, or uh, the third year, I suppose. Uh, Curtis Samuel, like I said, maybe we tag him. We might just let him go. Headed to the playoffs, and we do go 10-6, and six, but we did choke, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. We lost the final three games of the season, and yes, we did. The Cardinals, easily winnable. Cowboys, good team, but winnable. And Bears, you should win that matchup. Yet we do not, uh, I mean, not hard. You know, they're not the the worst teams in the world, so I'm not going to be super mad about it, but damn. Chase Hogan, yards alone, might get him to superstar and should get him to superstar realistically. Antonio Gibson, who's kind of coming up on a contract year here soon. You know, not the greatest of year there, and you know, I'm not saying that's super great. Hilton, okay for the number three. Curtis Samuel was decent. Terry McLaurin was pretty decent, and Njoku was pretty solid. Offensive line, you know, okay numbers, nothing really crazy. Barnes, the only guy with 100-plus tackles. Montez Sweat after a contract here. That's what we like to see. 12-and-a-half sacks leading the team. 10-and-a-half for Chase Young. Some okay numbers outside, but, you know, nothing you know special. Jamin Davis, five interceptions, not bad. Kicking Joey Sly was an absolute disaster. And one could make the argument that missing eight field goals Probably cost us at least a game, maybe more. Uh, as far as MVP goes, Hogan does go to number seven, which is not bad because you know he's like the only kind of youngster guy there. As far as anything else goes, number two for offensive player of the year, not bad. Uh, any rookie awards? Is that the DT we have? Like that was a very weak rookie awards uh, list, I suppose. That's a yikes. But we make the postseason. Going up against the Niners, definitely not the team you want to face. Like, this is probably one of the strongest, like, wildcard rounds you could ever ask for at this point. 
obviously there is an extra game this year, so you know you're going to see that. You know, this year and going forward, you're going to see a pretty good team or two playing in the wild card round that you wouldn't normally see. But, you know, we wouldn't have had the number two seed. The Niners wouldn't have had the number two seed, obviously. So realistically, no matter what year it is, no matter what seeding and rounds and how many matchups there are, this would have been an easily toughest wild card round there is. Niners, Washington, obviously we're a very high overall team. The Niners have have been on the on a roll for a while here now. At least their roster is good, as long as they stay healthy. Uh, Halftime score of 21 to 14. Very high scoring game so far. But we're holding on. We're holding on. It's a rainy one as well. It's where you would expect the run game to do well. But Gibson, of course, has been a bit of a salesman lately. And speaking of salesmen, I think we got rid of the ball there. Defense says, give us the ball back. Offense says, let's make ourselves lose. And boy, this is, I mean, I don't want to come in and help the team. But nowadays with how easy it is to play offense you should at least get yourself very close and I just know with the time constraints of the game you're just not going to and that ball is massively over alright good knockout though by Curtis just uh, maybe catch the ball when it's deflecting next time we have made it very clear that we will not be doing crossers anytime we come in I don't even know if everyone's agreed with uh, me coming in ever but you know I think if we're going to come into the game, the, why is that the decision? Like, now that is all our fault. That is 100% just not a good read as uh, the quarterback is not looking super great here. Let's see Hilton this time. Hilton should have the look. And that's a pretty good throw. And Hilton holds on and gets out of bounds. What a catch. Hilton was, go I got to see this back. I know. Wow. Do you see the game he's having? Look at the speed. I mean, he should have no business getting to this. And what does he do? He just outruns everyone. What a play. I'd be willing to bet. You know, I'm going to bet right now that if I get us to like the 35-yard line, they don't even attempt the field goal. And that was almost picked off. They're playing pretty damn good coverage. I got to give it to them. I'm actually really surprised they let Hilton get behind them the way they're playing. Got a really good freaking pass rush as well, obviously. Gibson slips it in. Hurry up to the line and spike it. With 12 seconds left, how much you want to bet they don't even attempt a field goal if I come out of this game? Well, they do have the field goal lined up. They do hit it. So, yeah, I mean, it wasn't easy by any means, but we definitely did. You know, we swayed the uh, outcome a little bit, but it, I guess not too much because uh, Hogan is clearly not ready for prime time as he just throws the game away right there. Only had one pick, and Garoppolo had three, but... He also threw for not a very good percentage, obviously. Uh, Gibson has just been an absolute salesman this season in its entirety. Hilton, what a year. And, I mean, that's got to be a pretty good signification that uh, that he's probably ready to take over for Curtis Samuel. The thing is, we have the money. I'm going to take a look at who we have to sign in the future and, of course, see where we're at currently. Because, man, Curtis Samuel is really good, and he makes this offense, like, the best in the league pretty much we just need a little more consistent quarterback play and uh we should be pretty much unstoppable can we say that if we give it to curtis samuel though i don't know as an, I'd, I'd take that the cardinals versus the titans that'd be a hell of a matchup to watch let's take a look at the uh the results of the dev ups and hogan does not go up in dev number two in uh yard should have gotten him there and it just doesn't defensively any dev ups it looks like jamin davis is now an x factor and so is Mr. Montez Sweat, and I really regret re-signing Jackson as he dropped down on 84 overall. That is harsh. No other dev ups, though, unfortunately. But let's take a look at how much money we have for Curtis and what we have to do next season. So a four-year 60, it's improved. Yeah, not improved for us, obviously, but improved for him. I, we can't, dude. We're just broke. Is there any names we can get rid of next season? We have to pay Chase Young. If we can get rid of Landon Collins, though, that would be a pretty big savings, which I don't think we can just yet. Oh, we can. So we are going to get rid of Landon Collins no matter what we decide to do with uh, with Curtis Samuel. But honestly, looking at this squad, there's just we just can't. We just can't. It's it's unfortunate. Curtis Samuel's gone, and he's very high value. I mean, you could probably make the argument of a second, a high second round pick at least. Not interested in signing the tag is 22. Yeah, we're not going to tag and trade. That's just way too much money lost. 
that's a huge loss. That's got to be a pretty valuable compensatory pick, right? That's got to be pretty decent, even though nobody wants him. And I will say McCole Hardman is there, so yeah, maybe not that crazy. Uh, Devin Bush, man, there are some really good players. This is probably like the best free agency class I've seen in a long time, right? Like, I, I don't see, I mean, even like, I know these guys are on, you know, glitched contracts. It should be a four plus year, even though it's only a two. But even those guys usually get the contract resigned. You usually don't see Jamar Chase. You sometimes see Waddle. You usually don't see uh, Najee Harris. But look at these names, like Eric McCoy. Let's see if we can clear any other space and see what we can do. Or right, we get a decently big name as we get Juan Thornhill on surprisingly only a four-year, $27 million deal. Uh, try to get Carl Joseph for a really cheap deal. Could not do it. As far as the safety talent goes, there's a lot of decent ones. So I don't think Landon Collins really even provides any value at all. Uh, so we're just going to straight up release him, saving lots and lots of cash. As far as what I feel like each player is best at... Uh, I'm just going to put Hood at strong safety just simply because he's slightly bigger and has better hit power. That's pretty much it. There's no real real mental thought behind that. And I will say, this is going to be an interesting year because even though... Oh man, this is really tough. I was going to say even though uh, Hogan's really solid, there's a Heisman winning quarterback there. The, the problem is, he's obviously a god, but... Our quarterback actually is pretty good. So I, I was going to make the move. I thought Hogan was only like an 83, 84. I was going to trade him for like a, a mid to late first, but he actually is pretty good. So uh, we're going to just keep him and do something else with the pick. Going to be picking up the fifth year option for Chase Young to save a little bit more money. And uh, we're going to keep on scouting. All right. So we obviously uh, ended up having that extra first round pick, and it turned out pretty damn good as we have pick number 12 out of it. Uh, this is the guy that's the highest moon he's gonna be an absolute god obviously but there's just no point like you don't you don't take a first round quarterback pick 12 if you have someone like Deshaun Watson without the uh, questionable uh, charges uh, of course Julian Jackson I think is going to be our number one pick here as we could still use a corner obviously he's an early first talent grade solid skills Pretty damn solid combine 6'1", 181 a little bit on the lighter side but obviously solid enough. Uh, we could also use a wide receiver. I don't think that's the biggest need. DT, D-line is, you know, very strong in this class. But the problem is, once again, we do not need those positions. So, realistically, corner is going to be our choice. Braxton Tompkins, who was uh, rated as fast. But I feel like, does that even mean anything? Like, does that actually, like, does that news story actually matter? Considering, you know, everyone could see if someone's fast, right? So, like, that's not really a some crazy report, is it? As did the quarterback already go? There he goes to the Patriots. Of course, they land a solid stud quarterback, as you would expect. Uh, that wide receiver is actually really good. 6'4", decently fast. You know, kind of reminds you of like a Mike Evans type, perhaps. We just don't need him, though. Like, we, I mean, we need him, but he's just not, he's not jumping off the board as much as he needs to be for us to take him. You have a sick-looking tight end here, but a lot of tight ends like that have been normal. Of course, Njoku is on like a three or a four year deal. He has like three or four years left or two to three years left anyways. And he played really well. So there's just no point. Julian Jackson is going to be our choice. He's probably going to go like pick 17. So it's a little early, but it's fine. And it really is fine because he's a 74 overall hidden. That's a good pick. That's just, it's just simply a good pick. It's, you know, nothing special. It's just good. As what is our next choice? So uh, Troy Taylor is up there because he has an early first grade uh, the center's up there because I think he has a mid-first grade, right? Let's see. Mid-first grade, early third, late second, early first. Safety's not the biggest issue in the world, but, you know, it's really not. But it is it is a good selection, though, isn't it? We go to the Texans. We're going to get 36, 68, and a fifth-round pick to move back about 10-ish spots, 12 spots. And I don't want to move too far back for that center, so... We'll probably move back another like seven or eight if we can. And we get a fourth next year to move back four spots, which is an absolute win, which is where we will most likely be taking the center. That safety looks so can't miss, but oh man, but is never like when you hear can't miss, can you really pass? I don't know. We have some decent picks still. I'm still going to take the center first because he looks really good. Should be like a 75 normal or an absolute steal. 11th and true talent, and honestly, with hidden 74 overall, his strength is a little bit lower. For how? Wasn't it like 32 reps? That's got to be like 86, 87 at least, no? Either way, 
obviously he'd be a top 10, top 15 pick for teams that need uh, linemen because, once again, as we all know, linemen are almost impossible to get hidden. But that's massive because Rulia is going to be gone now. Uh, he's probably going to be gone regardless, but at least now we have an option. And honestly, just straight up value. We gotta just we gotta take the guy. He can never have enough backups. And we have a, a sick number three DT. This is actually a really good team. Like this is probably the biggest abundant team we've ever had. Like we have a st solid starters across the board, and then we have good backups for most of them as well. Is that enough? Seven spots, you gain one twenty. Yeah, I mean that's not terrible, right? Yeah, you know, we moved back four spots, but it was a next year we got. I don't, I don't know if that's even fair still, but you know it is what it is. As we are going to be taking this strong safety, Troy Taylor, early first grade, he should be a god and. Yes, I knew his overall would be good at least, but I didn't know if he was going to be hidden or not. Safety is one of the easier positions to draft as well, which kind of now brings me to the point of, you know, Juan Thornhill. And I would say moving to corner, but we have a corner that we just drafted at sick too. This is a very good class. This is one of our better classes. I don't want to go around saying, oh, this is the best class we've ever had. You know, I say that way too often. Start of the third, which is where we, uh, you know, we gain that pick from moving down from the first don't have much after this though so if we're gonna take anyone here it's got to be a player we actually need the safety it looks okay not probably worth it though this guy not bad this where was the wide receiver i wanted hobbs yeah hobbs is our choice ironically enough he is built literally the same as uh curtis samuel and hilton a little bit lighter though i will say Running back, don't need him even though he is good. We'll see. We'll evaluate our options. Let's move this down to late fourth and take that wide receiver. Should get some good value out of it too. So it's not quite what I wanted, but the Colts were willing to give us a third next with uh, a late fourth. So I should be able to move up to the middle of the fourth by not really getting, you know, maybe the fourth this and a fifth. I do not know if it's fair. I've just kind of been going off the game lately because, you know, they did improve the trade block stuff or the trade stuff. So most of it is pretty decent, especially the draft pick stuff, but... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. No, he's still there. I, for some reason, I thought he was on the top of the list. Darren Hobbs should be a steal, and he is. Normal development. No hidden, unfortunately, but yeah, he's built literally like a slightly less heavy Curtis Samuel. I mean, that's kind of cheese, isn't it? With aggressive, guys. I don't even know if Curtis Samuel had aggressive. And the only guy left is that quarterback, which we don't really need, but it wouldn't hurt to have him. So if he's there, we'll take him. But let's be honest, he won't be there. Everyone goes about two rounds early around this pick. If uh, Oh, he's still there. Okay, we'll take him definitely then. Uh, Dylan Elam. And this is one of those guys you would definitely develop in a user class if you're, you know, kind of a team that just doesn't have a great quarterback or someone that's worth developing. That's not a bad selection, right? 88 throw power. You could kind of work with that. It's just, just good enough, I feel. And then obviously the speed is there. And then we have a, a middle linebacker that slipped far. Let's see what we can get. And whoo, not much. And we have a wide receiver that slipped pretty far. He was pretty decent looking for speed, though. I thought he'd been a little bit faster than that. But yeah, you know, they're not all winners, especially in the seventh round. As for the development traits, there is not a single player here that is like, oh, they might start or they might not start based on dev. You either start or you don't. Julian Jackson, star development traits. Zimmerman, let's be honest, we we got lucky enough to land a hit in to get Superstar is basically like the lottery times two, and uh, yeah, let's, let's be honest, we might change his number because he could be a guard, and then Troy Taylor, no chance to start even if he's Superstar, I don't know what we do if he is Superstar though, I think he start, I think he starts next season, and then we trade off the safety we currently have, that's, that's probably the play, as far as what we missed, there really wasn't anything. I just want to see the quarterback pretty much. CJ Brackett, uh, kind of slow, but very, very accurate. As far as a user standpoint, you definitely would rather have the guy we have, but the development trade being Superstar X Factor, as we expected, is right there. You know, it's it just wasn't the smart move. And, ooh, Firth, who I may have called Filth earlier, is hidden development trade. I did not expect that. A lot of these guys have been normal. That's why I usually skipped the tight end position unless you can get it late and we're gonna help him out by putting number 80 on him and oh that's a big miss that's a pretty big miss we could have used him definitely over the corner especially considering the safety uh, predicament we're in where we have too many but hey we have a six squad you can't be mad because your team is too good right it's not typically a complaint that you uh can have as uh Le'Veon Bell is still here I believe he has one more year on the contract we gave him a two-year 
uh, pretty much front loaded it. So if I was him, I'd be like, ah, I'm feeling like retirement. All right, here we are for year four. The team's an 88 overall. The team's looking good. Gibson, though, a questionable piece of the puzzle is he has the size required to play in modern sim, but the trucking and sif arm is seemingly holding him back here. And, I mean, he's a good overall. We're kind of low on money, but he hasn't played well. So all those three things combined are just not a good formula for him to stay on the team. Obviously, Terry, Terry McLaurin, we need him to get to X-Factor. We paid him like a six or a seven. I think it was a six-year deal worth like 129. So, you know, he's here for a long time. X-Factor me now. Uh, Parker Hilton, 99 speed. Really solid deep threat receiver. Try to get, uh, you know, short and medium going if we can. And then Hobbs is the new number three. Diami, or no, it's Diami Brown. Not really going to get much of a chance here. He's not actually that bad, though. So, I mean, maybe, maybe we move him up the list over Hobbs. But guys like Hobbs have just done well here, so I just want to keep him going. As far as defensively, we could use a new linebacker for Bentley, who is, you know, he signed a cheap deal with us, and he might need one, a contract this year or next year, but he's missed so many breakout chances, and, you know, he's he's pretty much at the end of the road here. D-line sick. Can we get Payne to Superstar and then X-Factor, though? That's the question. Corner, we need Kendall Fuller to get to Superstar because he is about to regress. And then William Jackson, obviously. Well, that's not William Jackson. Uh, we regret re-signing, but overall, he's still, you know, he's still viable. It's just we probably didn't need him since we drafted Jackson. McLean could have just filled the role of number two right out the gate. He's actually, like, almost just as good already. All right, Jamin Davis. We got a lot of guys to re-sign here, but we have a ton of money as well. So uh, Jamin Davis is one of 100% the number one guy to sign, and the, the contract's not that bad, giving him a 66 point. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's not leave the cotton. Yeah, actually, that, you know, that's pretty good. Let's not leave the contract on a bad uh, bad note. Gibson, let's take a look at the season he's having halfway through. He is doing pretty well. I mean, not pretty well, but he's his yards per carry are up. So uh, we're going to give him a five-year deal. He's just locked in. It's, it's a really cheap deal. But with the way he's been playing lately, I mean, I feel like you kind of have to accept that. He's he's kind of in backup territory number, right? And, of course, Samuel Cosme, a seven-year, $65 million deal. Uh, Bentley does need a contract. We're going to let him go. Chase Rullier, we're going to let him go. Uh, Charles Leno, only a 2.9 mil. What, what's happening to the league? Why is everyone so cheap? A 1.33 or a 1 for a 3.33 year deal is totally worth it. And honestly, with this kind of you know situation, we should easily be able to afford a Fuller. So let's knock that out before we get into the I don't want to play for you anymore territory. Worst case scenario, he drops like an 89 overall. He's still the best corner on the team. Uh, and then William Jackson, I'm just going to knock that out right now and say, sorry, pal, we appreciate your efforts. You've been a good decision, but uh, we've just hit really well in the draft and we're ready to move on without you, buddy, unfortunately. And that makes things so interesting. Of all the breakouts to hit, the safety we're really willing to replace and still maybe willing to replace. We're headed to the playoffs and let me tell you, what an absolute disaster. We finish eight and eight, but we were at five and seven at one point. If we do not win a Super Bowl next season or even come close, this is going to end as the biggest failure of a rebuild we've ever had. And obviously, it wouldn't be a failure on our part. This guy is an 89 overall, and he just can't throw. His deep accuracy is kind of bad, but you know he's fast. You don't want him to throw the ball deep. So medium and short being the highest are probably the best case scenario, anyways. Rushing, I mean, Gibson can't really be blamed here. Yards per carry were absolutely fine. And he is backup tag category, you know, backup numbers territory. Receivers, we have good receivers. We're just not playing well. O-line, our line is decent enough. Sam Cosme is the best tackle on the team. He gives up 14 sacks. Chris Barnes should go to star now. Sweat. That is not a guy that has been disappointing. That is like the first time in some time we've had it where a pass rusher gets paid and he actually plays better after the contract, thankfully. Chase Young with that tag, I'm not sure what we do with him. 8.5 sacks, I mean, that's good, but he's going to be asking for like 20 mil per year. I mean, and he's going to be locked in long term, so I don't even know. Joey Sly was better. I don't know what to tell you. Like I said, this is easily the biggest failed rebuild ever for us if we don't make it out. You know, if we don't make it to the Super Bowl or come close to it next season... I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Like, we're entering year five here, and this team is absolutely stacked. Receiver Hilton, you know, he's he's getting there. Obviously, he's still lacking a little bit, but he's getting there. He's obviously super fast, great deep threat receiver. 
Uh, David Njoku's okay. O-line's definitely, you know, it's usable. It's definitely good enough. Uh, Zimmerman's going to be a 76 overall starting center for us. You know, our running back is a 90. Our quarterback's an 89. Our number one wide receiver is a 99. Uh, defensively, we have easily the best pass rush in football. Jamin Davis is obviously a do-it-all, uh, you know, hybrid-type uh, linebacker that the league has been looking for lately. Chris Barnes is a great run stopper who actually does have... Uh, if I'm not mistaken, pretty good coverage stats. Like 76 zone, 69 man coverage for a guy that's built to stop the run with that 93 pursuit, 86 block shed, 93 tackle, decently fast. I mean, this is a really good roster. I don't know what to tell you, but uh, I will say we are actually going to trade Theo Hood. He is a very good player, but Taylor is going to be on a rookie deal for some time, and uh, Theo Hood isn't. We should be able to get a first-round pick off of him, a late first-round pick from, I don't know, some random team that's one player away, maybe? We can find a team in the 30s that doesn't have a good safety. I'm making the argument that he's worth a first-round pick because he's, what, 24-25 at Superstar? That's an absolute steal. As the Vikings and the Raiders make it to the Super Bowl before us, how? In what universe? Obviously, our quarterback's not going to go up in dev. No one is going to go up in dev on offense. Defensively, though, Barnes does go to star, and Hood <laughs> goes the X-Factor. You've got to be kidding me oh my lord how do i make the argument now i don't know what to tell you dude i really don't do we make this our final season is the question i think we do 27 mil to work with could use a lineman now i really wish we would have went with eric mccoy hooper would be a nice uh, bonus to the team we already paid gibson so we can't go for taylor uh, we don't need any of those guys cooper cup would actually be decent but he's not asking for a one year he's asking for multi-year Chenault as the number two. Do we pay him to be the number two? Like he is kind of like what we're missing, kind of like a medium route guy where he can't really go deep. That's kind of what we are missing here. So I don't know. We'll think about it. Tevin Jenkins is in free agency. Interesting. All right. So we actually got Jam Brown. We tried to get him the first time around. We could not. He's going to be our new right outside linebacker, which gives us the best linebacking group in the league. And then Chenault on a three-year, $28 million deal makes us the best receiving group in the league with Hilton playing the number three spot. The deep threat guy, super fast, gets to his spot instantly. Uh, I mean, this team really will not get any better than this because we got to pay Hogan next season, and and we probably have to pay... Oh, yeah, we have to pay Chase Young. So, yeah, I think year five, this this is the year. This is... where That's 100%. This is the year, which means we're going to keep Theo around. I think maybe trade him at the uh, deadline if we're playing meh. Like, Theo's worth a lot, though. I'm, You know what? I'm going to trade him still. I'm going to trade him. Even though he's an X-Factor, we got an, a superstar. But, you know, superstar, X-Factor, what's really the difference, honestly? Especially when one of them is 22. Yeah, we pretty much have to pay him now because I think you get more out of Chase Hogan if you sign him now as a star, maybe a 90 overall at the time, rather than wait till when he's a superstar or even an X-Factor after the fifth-year option. Uh, I just think if you got a guy that's, uh, you know, what is it 90 overall star you pretty much have to make him your franchise and as far as what's in this class there's really not a lot i am a little saddened though because this guy is the heisman winner we have pick 16 we have a left end and a safety that are both really talented that are on contract years that we are what am i doing here that we are going to be getting rid of here so we could easily get that wide receiver but we just paid Chenault so there's not much we can do about it even though he's a top tier talent so I mean what do you, what do you do honestly all right here it is the final draft of this rebuild most likely at least I gotta say most likely because you never know what last second decision well let's give it one more try type of thing uh once again we have value that we can get rid of and we definitely will be and we also added the tight end to the list because they mention him being the clear-cut best tight end. How the hell is that wide receiver still there? How the hell is that wide receiver still there? How is he still there? Is he not still there? Of course he goes to the... Of course the Patriots take back-to-back -back Heisman winning players that are likely both going to be freaking X-Factors. I swear. I su There's a really good wide receivers in this class, I will say. I got to take a look at all of them. They're sick. What is this? No wonder why Chenault wasn't going for much. Every receiver's a god now. Oh, my. All right. Uh, as far as first-round talents go, we do also have this other tight end that does look like in a user league, I'd probably take him over the guy we want. But this guy, he's a mid-first for one. And two, 
uh, while his skills look really sick too. But more importantly, they mentioned him as the clear-cut top tight end. Let's test that out. And I don't know if that's true, but a 75 overall hidden works for me. Obviously, he's a really good-looking player already, and he hasn't even played a snap yet. So, not bad. Not like we're going to be seeing the pick anyways, most likely, but we get 33 this year and 40 next year for a Hood, Miller, and a 6th next. They definitely won that trade, especially just Hood alone, but obviously uh, having the extras help as well. Uh, Joe Wilcox is hard to pass on him, but I, I have to. Uh, Dennis Staley, we could use a player. Why not? We're going to take him. And 71 overall, normal. Uh, what a pick. Glad we got rid of an X-Factor safety for that. And then Nash, who's on a contract year, we're going to be trading him to the Bills for a second-round pick next year. Once again, another pick we probably won't see. And then with this pick, we pretty much have to take this middle linebacker. He looks sick. Eric Gordon, 71 overall, normal, super athletic. 80 jumping is not bad at all for a middle linebacker, and that's pretty much what we're going to get. There also was an interesting news story is that Mr. Luke Blackshear and this cornerback, who is old, We'll have great matchups in the future for a long time coming. Obviously, Blackshear looks like the better of the two. We're going to be moving up to the Broncos to take him uh, if he's still there, which he is. Two quarterbacks go back to back. Time to go to Denver. Pick 80 and 112 this year for 67. We still have pick 17 in the third round. This pick, obviously, we already mentioned it. Luke Blackshear, let's see what we get. And we do get a hidden development wide receiver, so... Glad we paid for Chenault. Clearly worth the money. We trade that pick for a third and a fourth next year from the Raiders. They end up taking a decent running back. Now at the first pick in the fourth round, even though he's 24, I think you have to take him just because they mentioned him and the other guy was hidden. And he is also hidden. Uh, he definitely is super raw. I'm going to be honest with you. Even with hidden, unless he's like an X factor, he's really bad. And I don't even see him as a corner. I see him more as a safety Better zone coverage, really good hit power, really good block shed even for a, a corner slash safety. He just doesn't seem like a safety. He just seems too slow and his agility sucks. I mean, I don't know. Probably won't even see the light of day anyways, but still. Fifth round now, all the players we want are still there. Lineman's probably the biggest need. They're both, yikes. I guess Desmond Holmes is going to be our choice. 68 overall normal. Love it. And we might as well keep the sadness train moving along. Late 7th or an early 7th. We'll be taking the quarterback. Brian Collins. And he's hit in development trade. Of course, he is super raw. Still probably usable. But, I mean, unless he's superstar, I don't know if I would really put too much into him if I was in a user league. But I guess star is a nice little uh, starting point. Jamie Harris, the other selection. Another 68 overall bust lineman. Can't really call him a bust because, you know, it's in the fifth round and we didn't expect him to be great. But, yeah, we were taking a chance, hoping for the best. And then Greg Wheeler, by far the best punter available, 73 overall with 90 kick power for an A+. plus. Like, you just barely make him usable with an A+. plus. Come on, man. Really good punter, though, considering sim, uh, sim logic. And then we'll be trading down our seventh round pick because clearly we don't have enough picks for next year. All right, did we even draft a single starter? The tight end could be a starter, not this season, though. So, yeah, I don't think we drafted a single player that would start or could start for us this year. But let's take a look. Frank Logan, X-Factor, 80 number. I mean, I guess he's the only 80 we have. Uh, let's sweet. Uh, Blackshear is star. Still an absolute win of a pick, obviously. Uh, we have this corner, Marquise Harris. Once again, I don't expect anything from this guy. Honestly, even if he was an X-Factor, I think he's a bad player. And he is superstar. Cool for being superstar. We can't give you 21, though. Uh, I mean, okay. I mean, I don't really can't really do anything with him, but sure. Brian Collins, this is guaranteed to be star. Like, there's literally, I would bet everything in the world on it that he's star dev. And yes, he is. But now to find out if the Patriots got themselves another X Factor. What a god. No aggress. EA, stop. Please. No aggressive catch. Six, he's like the greatest wide receiver prospect I've ever seen. And you're going to do this to him. Oh, he is only star, though. Okay, I mean, still really good, obviously, but... Okay, that changes things. I mean, definitely not the best anymore, but he's still really good, obviously. Another hidden development trade player. 
aggressive possession. And don't know if it said run after the catch. These wide receivers are too sick not to take a look at, I suppose. And, ooh, I was like, damn, they sold. That's crazy because you would have expected, you know, the guy that we were looking at to be the best. But that guy's obviously the best. 21 years old with X Factor. Another hidden development trade player. Uh, this guy's pretty much like the worst of the three so far, just guaranteed because of age. Two years he has to make up, basically, and he's only star. Very athletic, but yeah, it's a little bit of a, a loss. And then the final one, normal dev. They just drafted another freaking Andy Isabella. Way to go. Another Andy Isabella, Rondale Moore. All right, here it is. 90 overall team. The final season is among us. Uh, 88 overall there, 88 overall there, 99 there, 90, 89, 86 with a superstar backup. God tier tackle, God tier guard at left side. And eh, we don't talk about it. It's okay. Uh, best front seven by a mile in football. Obviously, really solid number one corner and free safety. Up and coming strong safety who learned from a guy that went from star development to X factor in one season. McLean, not a bad backup up and coming corner himself. And then Jackson, number three. I mean, it's a really good squad. I mean, I just do not get how this is like, what, year five and we're not even going to see a Super Bowl potentially. It is re-signing time. Chase Hogan, even though I don't think he's even that great, you kind of have to sign him, right? Like He's one of those above average guys you just have to keep. Chris Barnes looks at like that best linebacking group in the league uh, title is not going to last long as he's about to go. Kendall Fuller we'll see about because he did drop a decent bit, especially in speed. Chase Young, I mean, he's not playing super well, but he has five sacks halfway through the season. He's put up near double digit every year. I mean, he's worth it, right? 20 mil pretty much per year is fine. Left guard Clarence Peters, this is a nice seven-year deal because that's super favorable for us. 18 mil left to work with. Tress Way, we have a backup punter we can use. We need a new left tackle. Uh, backup running back, we, I mean, it doesn't really matter. The guy never comes in anyways. So, yeah, I mean, you can see we're losing talent. This is the year. Obviously, it's the year. Like, you could still work off of, you know, no Chris Barnes, no Fuller, no this and that. But if we can't consistently make the playoffs or even make, get, like, a decent season like we had here with 10 and 6 only... I mean, how are you going to do it without those guys? A number one corner, a number one linebacker, or number two, if you want to call him that. Chase Hogan, okay numbers, but nothing spectacular. I mean, it does seem kind of like we are a running team more. Three uh, solid receiving seasons. Obviously, Hilton, the lesser of the three, but there's only so many passes you can get out to people. The tackles were absolutely awful. Chris Barnes, barely over 100 tackles. Uh, Fuller with four picks, a couple of okay pick numbers. Sack totals, Chase Young with nine. Uh, Jonathan Allen showing up again finally with nine. Uh, didn't change anything about the scheme, the subs, the lineup at all. Uh, sweat goes from 18 and a half to five and a half. And it didn't really even, you know, boost Chase Young's numbers up. So I don't know what happened there, but that is a massive disproportionate number change. I mean, that's like, what, 13 sacks? That's, I mean, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. And I keep flickering back and forth. It's not showing anything. Uh, any award wins at all? No. I did. I don't think there was, right? It didn't look like there was. But anyways, going against the Buccaneers, who still probably have a sick roster there. 91, we're in a 93. We'd have probably been near a 99 here if we would have actually won all these playoff games like we should have and gotten all that extra XP. And hell, even our quarterback should have been superstar by now just based on the yards. But regardless, we're here. Make it count. Make it to the Super Bowl. Win or lose, I'm, I'm happy, you know? As you can see, Trask for the Buccaneers is apparently their starting quarterback. Will that happen in real life? Who knows? Might outplay Trask's whole whole career by the time Brady retires. 7-3. Uh, Not a great performance, but we do find a way to get the lead before half. 17-7 to seven now. 24-7. Uh, to seven. That's a not a bad performance. You know, it's looking pretty decent. Well, and hold up. And the game isn't over. You've got to be joking me here. And the defense holds up barely. Come on, fellas. They actually almost choked it. Look at Hogan. I'm telling you. I don't think he's the guy. But can the team carry him? Can the team carry him? The squad's good enough. Like, whether you think he's the guy or not, he's in the 90s. The whole damn team is in the 90s, pretty much. Yeah, we can't win anything. But at least we're in the divisional. <laughs> Going up against the Green Bay Packers, 9-7 and seven to their 91 overall. Another 93-91 to 91 overall matchup. Please, for the love of Jesus, just just get us to the championship and then the Super Bowl. That's all I ask, as it's a snowy... Oh, this would be a classical. 
Nighttime snow games are just god tier. As the Dolphins smack the Jets, absolutely smash them into the ground, and then some 3 0 start. Can we get a touchdown? We can start of the second quarter. It's looking strugglesome for both teams. We're looking a little bit better. Not by much, but a little bit. As it's a 10 to 9 game. It's kind of what you expect in the snow. 17 to 9, 23 to 9, 23 to 12, 30 to 12. And that should be enough to hold on. And it is. As we're headed to the championship round, at least Green Bay doesn't, you know, get beat in the championship, right? As Jordan Love is the quarterback here. I think regardless of the real-life situation, that would probably be the case, right? I mean, this is, you know, Rodgers would be, what, 42 maybe? I don't even know. Uh, Gibson, really good numbers. Let, let me one second. No, I'm surprised. I thought it was going to be a big rush. I guess not. Chenault and McLaurin go off. Amari Rodgers is still here. That's cool. The only AR that's still there. Uh, good sack numbers. There you go. The big fellas making some plays. Sly misses an extra point. And I would say that's okay, but it's really not. How are you going to hit your field goal but miss an extra point? And the Rams. I think that's the team we actually beat. 84 overall. They're in the playoffs because of Cam Newton. Literally like a sim glitch god, which, of course, we've made a video about sim gods. We did miss a few players in there, but obviously Cam spearheaded that one. And, you know, take a look at it. I don't remember if we won the Super Bowl. I think it was pretty successful. I don't remember if we won it all or not, but... Maybe check that out on YouTube. Who knows? I don't know if you watched it or not. It's a pretty good video. 7-0, to zero, nearing halftime. Guys, anything? I mean, really good job on defense, but offense, please. 7-all, seven 7-14. Seven defense is doing about as much as they can. And, I mean, what can you do? As a defense, how do you even play? Like, why would you even have motivation if you're the defense? As the defense is holding them up into this game... Which causes a field goal, 17-17. to 17. Are they going to get the field goal off? They're actually going to let the... This game is so flawless. Seven seconds left with a timeout, and the clock was just draining away. And they miss anyways. And more importantly, did they almost get it? No, he missed. Okay, fair enough. Joey Sly, you're an absolute disaster, and I hate you. But thank God they at least kicked the field goal. Woo! Hey, that's too fast for my liking. I want to actually see this. And maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't after all. What a disaster. Oh, my knee. What a disaster, dude. Well, that's it. I don't care. We at least got to the championship. I Damn it, it wasn't the Super Bowl. We lost an 84 overall team. Hogan is dog crepe. How do you do that well on defense? And you don't win. How is the defense so good? Aaron Donald, though, in fairness. <laughs> Three sacks for Young. One and a half for Allen. One for Gordon. Both quarterbacks, let me put it this way, had a bad day. Marquise Harris, the superstar, really bad corner, gets a pick. Barnes got a pick. I mean, just players you wouldn't expect. And look at this. One for three. What was the distance? I know one was 46. Okay, one was 50 plus at least. But come on, dude. He's like, well, you talked about missing extra points and you made that field goal. Guess what? Pressure's off when I miss the field goal, isn't it? It's really not, but good job selling. Anyways, that's where I sit, honestly. We'll take a look at the Super Bowl winner, but that's that's about all you're going to get from me here. Success, but considering how good of a roster we built, unsuccessful. I blame EA, of course. The Rams do win the Super Bowl, so I guess we lost to the Super Bowl champions. It doesn't make me feel any better at all. It just really makes me sad that Cam Newton just wins all the time in Madden because politics that's it that's all i interpreted it how you want interpret it how you want that's it uh anyways thanks for watching hope you guys did enjoy this if you did maybe leave a like subscribe if you're new follow me on twitter drop care second channel pk plays twitch.tv slash drop care for streams which will be one tonight 100 this is recording before sunday so i have no idea if i stream yesterday or not but let's be honest probably didn't so can't wait to let you guys down again tonight <laughs> Of course, I don't know if I mentioned the uh, Amazon affiliate link. Should be a pin comment about something Washington related that you won't buy. But if you click on the link and buy anything at all within 24 hours, I get a little percentage. Monopoly Man says, rats, no fifth yacht this week. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, uh, Jotun Dorton. Your mom's a Jotunheim. More like Deep Throatenheim. <laughs> what? You know what? Uh -huh. Right before I gave it to her. Oh.
Oh! Yeah, now you're cold. I guess who asked, not me. Oh, gold. 